Okay, so good evening everyone. Uh, first, uh, uh, salamat sa UAPGA for inviting me as one of your uh, guest speaker for this uh, webinar topic, The Green Architecture Advocacy. So, um, just to share with you my insights about green architecture, um, the first time I heard about uh, green architecture is during my uh, college years. In fact, uh, I read books, references about blue architecture. You know, you, this pertains to architecture in uh, underwater or water landscape. And of course, um, I, I read a lot about uh, green architecture, which focuses on resource efficiency and environmental stewardship. And because of this curiosity, it inspired me to go deeper and uh, understand what makes a building truly green. And, uh, and I believe we are all gathered here in this, uh, in this um, webinar to explore what truly is uh, the definition of green architecture. And if we want to understand green architecture, we need to know, of course, the different elements of a building. And these elements, they, uh, this includes um, uh, site, uh, energy, water. We also have the building material, ma materials, uh, the transportation, indoor environment quality, and other social and environmental elements of the site. And, um, and of course, um, let me start by discussing further some of the concerns in site. And I think this is fundamental because we are talking about site. Um, uh, the, the, there are many elements inside that we need to incorporate in our design uh, to make our buildings more sustainable. So for site, of course, we have uh, uh, stormwater flooding. Etong taong to, we have U Ulysses. Uh, may, uh, ma nakita natin kung ano talaga yung problema na meron sa Metro Manila, for example. And we, uh, we can assume that this is happening Yes, because of climate change, global warming, tumataas yung rate ng flooding at ulan. But I think one of the ways for us to make our buildings more uh, resilient to these uh, uh, environmental forces is to incorporate strategies. Let's say, for example, perhaps we can use uh, uh, pervious paving or pavement instead of impervious building materials. Ang nangyayari kasi, um, our uh, our stormwater infrastructure are very centralized. Okay? Sinasabi ko centralized, uh, ibig sabihin nito, yung bawat development, yung bawat lote, bawat building, instead of, uh, uh, instead of uh, individually, they provide some form of stormwater retention in their site. Eh, ang nangyayari, tinatransfer lang natin papalaba sa public infrastructure. So perhaps there is a need for us to change our principle in designing. In fact, sa building code nga natin, we have ISA, we have USA. Pag sinabi na ISA, alam natin ito, we have impervious surface area, we have unpaved surface area. Uh, the purpose of this um, standards in our code is to at least minimize uh, our reliance for stormwater retention instead na uh, instead of uh, transferring our stormwater sa public, eh, dapat yung bawat site natin, eh, meron contribution on how to minimize itong uh, stormwater. Okay? So, this is the reason why in nature, for example, if you go to, uh, of course, alam natin, sa forest, Sierra Madre, they are very fundamental to make uh, uh, our built environment more resilient to flooding kasi unang-una, natural environment, of course, they absorb storm water. Okay? So perhaps, if we are the designer, we can learn something from forests and integrate the same principle from a forest and use it in our building design. And another uh, uh, concern here in Metro Manila, 
although hindi ito masyado na pag-uusapan, pero nangyayari to every summer, is Urban Heat Island. Yung Urban Heat Island, ito yung pag-init ng syudad kumpara doon sa, ano, no, sa surrounding niya. Obviously, it's because of the building materials we are using. And of course, uh, hindi ito masyado napapansin, pero every summer, maraming namamatay na tao, especially people with uh, high, blood, high blood pressure and elderly. These are these are the people that are more vulnerable to heat island. No, hindi to masyado na new news uh, every summer, but definitely if you try to look for st- statistics, marami pong namamatay na elderly and high blood pressure na mga tao uh, during summer. Okay? Perhaps in our materials we need to incorporate some uh, we use materials that has high heat absorptive Alam natin in Metro Manila in urban areas we m- mostly we use concrete no sa mga pader is because uh, we have the building code so kailangan yung ano no it has something to do with fire risk so we have to use concrete and concrete is one of the uh, high heat absorbers material which contribute to urban heat island perhaps we can explore some cha- uh, strategies in terms of the, its color, no? in the physics, alam natin, white is the most reflective color. Therefore, we may be able to use white color. Okay? Per, uh, in fact, in nature, if you know desert snail, no, in desert snail, they thrive in an, a very hot environment. Okay? Napakainit. Pero yung shell nila is color white. So for millions of years, uh, these species, they've been using this strategy and recently lang na-discover natin that white is the most reflective color, but perhaps we can use nature as our inspiration in order to uh, provide strategy for this uh, for some of these environmental uh, forces that we are facing here in Metro Manila. And of course, um, if you want to reduce urban heat island, we, we can explore urban design elements such as street orientation so that our uh, community, they can, uh, they can leverage a natural vent- ventilation from prevailing wind. No, nangyayari kasi natatrap yung init sa, ano, sa, sa, sa urban canyons. So, nangyayari, hindi siya na-flash out. That's why it contributes to urban heat island. So, ito lamang yung mga concerns sa site na maganda, aware tayo. Kasi nga, uh, individually, each of, the, of each of our buildings, they contribute to stormwater and urban heat island. And, papunta naman tayo sa energy component ng uh, building, ano? And of course, uh, when we talk about energy consumption, um, this has something to do with um, uh, carbon emission. Of course, the more power is cons- uh, consumed in a building, the more carbon emission is. Of course, literally, wala tayong makita sa building na nag-iimit ng, ano, ano, ng pollution. But if you go to power plant, they emit a lot of pollution. This has something to do, of course, with climate change and global warming. And of course, if you want to leverage uh uh, if you want to improve our energy consumption, there is a need for us to leverage free energy by way of orienting our buildings with respect to uh, prevailing wind or sun path. Of course, uh, isa sa mga free resources na pwede nating makuha is natural lighting. So natural lighting, um, of course, if you use natural lighting, we may reduce our uh, uh, reliance on artificial lights. By, uh, we can do this by way of uh, providing uh, minimum uh, 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 window-to-wall ratio. No? Pero yun nga, uh, we have to take into account yung glare. Ang nangyayari kasi minsan, we, we, we allow too much natural light. Yes, it reduces energy, but there is a, 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 no, no, a comfort issue that we need to consider as well, yung glare. Masyadong, masakit sa mata. At sa building facades naman, uh, mahalaga, if your building is facing south or southwest, we need to use uh, solar shading. Probably th- that's the cheapest uh, strategy in order to avoid direct solar exposure com- uh, coming inside the building. And there are other strategies uh, that we can use. We have double glazing, uh, low emissiv- low e glass, and tawag nila. Yun nga lang, medyo mas mahal siya, but definitely uh, these are just some of the technologies that we can use in order to lower our energy consumption for building. Of course, natural ventilation, if we allow it in our building, it can, uh, we, we, we can reduce our cooling load requirements and of course, less power consumption. Yun nga lang, 
uh, in urban area, medyo challenging yung natural ventilation kasi unang-una, uh, yung air pollution, ayaw natin na mapunta yung, ano, no, yung, yung pollution papunta sa building natin. And of course, um, in, if, you, if you refer to nature, there are many uh, structures in nature that leverages uh, this natural ventilation, yung termite mound, ant nest, uh, ito yung mga ano, uh, ito yung mga natural or uh, organisms that they uh, that we considered as the best mechanical engineers in nature because they mastered ventilation. Perhaps we can use these uh, organisms in order for us to make our building more energy efficient. Of course, marami pang iba, no? Maybe we have renewable and clean energy, solar panel, photovoltaic, geothermal, wind turbine, so forth. So these are all can uh, help. Uh, lower energy consumption in buildings. Uh, pagdating naman sa water, of course, um, we need to harness free water resources as much as possible. Uh, um, we, we can uh, capture rainwater. Alam, alam natin, we, we can capture rainwater by way of uh, uh, harvesting it and we can uh, use it for non-potable uses such as watering of plants, cleaning uh, non-food items or tools. We can also use it for flushing of toilets and urinal, etc. Marami tayong pwede mag, uh, mapagamitan no? if, you, if you only harvest rainwater. And of course, once we use potable water or rainwater, we can still recycle it. No, For example, uh, we can make, we, we can recycle it by, by, by uh, integrating other systems, filtering systems, para pwede natin siya recycle pa ulit-ulit. Or we can also use recycled water coming from cooling towers or AC use, pwede rin i-recycle ito, pwede rin magamit ito. And of course, there are many technologies that we can integrate in our building that uh, uh, further enhances uh, water efficiency, low flush toilet, um, uh, water flow restrictor. Uh, makakatulong din kung meron tayong water metering in every, ano, no, in every toilet siguro para ma-identify natin kung saan yung may leak. Therefore, ma-ano natin, ma-prevent natin yung uh, wastage. And of course, uh, uh, one of the important uh, uh, factors for water efficiency is I think we also need to recharge water, our water aquifer. Uh, in Metro Manila, according to studies, Metro Manila, there, uh, ano siya, nagsisink siya dahan-dahan, no? uh, half inch a year. If I remember it correctly, ganun yung, ano, ganun yung, bumababa, bumababa yung Metro Manila. It's because we are consuming a lot of water, pero hindi natin, we are consuming a lot of uh, groundwater. Okay? Pero hindi tayo uh, tumutulong doon sa aquifer recharge. So that's one of the challenge na I think we can uh, uh, let our design contribute to this uh, aquifer recharge. Of course, another uh, uh, component in uh, green architecture is uh, materials. Uh, as much as possible, we use readily available materials. Uh, when we say readily available materials, pwede gamitin natin regional or indigenous materials, anything that is near our site, siguro dapat yun ang gamitin natin instead of using materials coming from different countries. Kasi kapag gumawa tayo ng materials coming from different countries, we are increasing the carbon footprint of our buildings, no? In transportation, in gas, etc. These all uh, can contribute to carbon emission. Perhaps we can also, uh, uh, what, some of the strategies that we can do is to reuse materials from demolished buildings, no? So as much as possible, uh, if, uh, if we use uh, materials uh, from demolished building, we avoid extraction of new raw, mater uh, raw materials. And of course, other um, components of building materials, we need to avoid toxic materials. Instead, we use materials with small subset of elements, perhaps copper, uh, aluminum, tin, so forth. These are all materials that if you leave it in the environment, they don't create and they, they are not toxic. No? Uh, there are building materials kasi na dahil kinoombang yung iba't ibang chemical it, and create a new uh, building material. Ang problema, if you throw it in the environment, it creates uh, 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 adverse effect. No? Nagiging toxic siya. And of course, uh, we, uh, we have to avoid the use of plastic as much as possible, no? Because they don't degrade unless we have a strategy of recycling them back. And there are also uh, renewable materials that we can use. Uh, we have bamboo. Perhaps we can use tree or wood that are sustainably harvested, okay? 
or we can also include material recycling such as storage and collection of recyclable materials in our buildings. Sa batas natin, meron tayong material recovery facility, but uh, um, perhaps in each of our building design, we, has this, we have this element of material recovery, recovery facility para ma-provide, uh, ma ma tayo, ma ma provide natin yung mga users no? uh, to have an attitude wherein they recycle all the materials in that, uh, in that building. Okay, and another uh, uh, another concept that is happening right now, we have urban mining. Kasi, we have mining, we are mining the natural environment, pero our built in environment can also be used for mining. Ang tawag dito, urban mining. Perhaps, uh, yung mga na-demolish na building, yung mga old building, these can all uh, function or as a resource, a resource for raw materials for new construction. And another uh, component for uh, green architecture is transportation. So when we talk about transportation, uh, alam natin in our building code, we are required to provide minimum number of parking bago siya ma-approve. So I think we need to change this standard instead of providing minimum parking for cars. Siguro napapanahon na para mag-provide tayo na minimum parking for bicycle facilities. Okay? Lalong lalo na ngayon. Uh, we experience pandemic. Ang daming walang sasakyan, napilitang maglakad. So, nagkaroon ng, ano, no? nagkaroon ng debate. Buti pa yung mga mayayaman, they can move around because they have cars. So, this is something that we need to consider in our design. And of course, um, um, we need to create an, a community architecture that encourage walking, work, create an ambience of a, a walkable community. Okay? Kasi ngayon, if you observe uh, our housing design, we always highlight the importance of carports in our facade okay so i'm not saying that we remove them but i think the most important uh, component that we have to include in our design is to create a facade that uh, enhances or promote walkability if you move around that community because if you go to residential subdivision makikita mo, these are all meron silang ano, no, infrastructure for gates para sa sasakyan. so perhaps we need to change some of our design practices you know in order to change how people think about transportation, especially for walking. Of course, uh, another component is we need to incorporate indoor environment quality. So according to studies, uh, tayo, especially urban people, 90% of our time in a day is spent indoors. Okay, 90%. So there is uh, uh, there is a necess necess necessity to incorporate strategies in indoor environment to create a more safe and healthy for users. So, hindi lang, may, hindi lang tayo concerned sa pollution sa labas. Of course, sa loob ng building natin, sa indoor environment, uh, th th there are also uh, factors for pollution. So, in this case, perhaps we can use Material, materials that are low emitting or non-toxic materials. Uh, alam natin, we, we use paints, we have ad adhesives. So we need to make sure that the, the paints that we are using or the adhesive that we're, we're going to use are free from chemicals such as urea, formaldehyde, kasi cancerous siya. Okay? And uh, of course, in indoor environment, mahalaga din na ma-provide natin yung lighting because it dictates mood and behavior, warm light, cool light. It, it, as much as possible, we have to simulate the setting of the natural uh, sunrise and sunset so that our body could also adapt to those changes para maganda yung ano natin, sleeping pattern. And of course, we, we need to avoid too much humidity indoors kasi mas maraming humidity, nagkakaroon ng mold. In the Philippines, medyo hindi tayo aware about mold, pero yun nga, no? uh, this is one of the considerations that we need to uh, know in indoor environment kasi sa mga asthmatic, per, sa mga asthmatic uh, delicado to, okay? So, again, uh, there are many uh, factors in indoor environment that we need to uh, consider. No? Yung noise, we have, we should be uh, uh, quality of uh, view, uh, pest management, daylighting, so forth, ventilation, air, air, air filtration. These are all strategies that we can incorporate in our indoor environment. And yeah, so perhaps we need to assess our direction where we are headed in terms of design. So is it possible that, uh, that our building can function like a tree 
and collectively these buildings that functioning like a tree can function like a forest collectively okay perhaps we need to share our built environment as well with other species such as birds pollinating insects and other animals that can help us thrive even further so ngayon kasi we are creating a lot of green architecture design but we are missing uh, some elements of integrating habitable ha, habitable space for species i think we need to consider this in our design if we if we really want to head to go uh, sustainable okay perhaps uh, there is a need to revisit ancient knowledge especially in design and construction so alam natin dito sa pilipinas marami tayong ancient or uh, 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 let's just say mga ano na mga mga struktura na ating mga katutubo marami tayong matututunan sa kanila because uh, their practices in design and construction they leverage indigenous they use indigenous materials we sabi nito they only use locally available materials ko ano meron sa site sa area nila ito na mismo yung ginagamit nila and of course their buildings uh, for example bahay kubo wala lang sa slides they leverage free energy wind sun water food minsan doon na rin mismo yung ano no yung alaga nila so these are some of the ideas that i think we can incorporate in our design to make uh, our urban buildings more sustainable and i think one of the most important factor that we can learn from these ancient knowledges is the culturally responsive design because they have a sense of identity no bahay kubo bahay sa ifugao etc and other uh, indigenous structures meron silang identity which is not uh, embedded in our urban design structures okay so hindi mo ma-identify kung Filipino ba to or kung ano no it's because of globalization okay so i think yeah so before i end my presentation uh, i think we need to be humble in our design instead of aiming for uh, a design that is different because we want to be famous or whatever perhaps we can learn from nature and not rely on existing human knowledge and technologies um, so that we can create a more sustainable world not only for human or, or for our next generation but also for other life on this planet so ilamang po maraming salamat